can have fire. And we can have the knowledge of fire. But with that comes the knowledge of everything. Hey guys, are you ready to take a little bit of a trip? So, I'm back today and I'm going to be talking a little bit about Red Dead Redemption 2 and its newest trailer. As a lot of you guys know, this week, Rockstar dropped this brand new Red Dead Redemption 2 trailer. Some people loved it, some people didn't love it, but I was a huge fan of the first Red Dead Redemption and the characters. The amount of storytelling that that game did for me, the amount of atmosphere, was just incredible. And that's why I wanted to kind of go over the newest trailer and see how things really shaped out. So let's have a look at the trailer. I'm just going to break down every scene step by step and kind of explain small details just so you can know. So as you can see, the trailer opens up with a lot of text, and it's very, very metaphorical text, but they talk about how Red Dead Redemption 2 is actually going to be set in 1899. And that's really cool, because this confirms the fact that RDR 2 is actually a prequel, which is set before the timeline of Red Dead Redemption 1, which stars John Marston. Now, I'm not going to go into spoilers here, but a lot of you guys are going to know that John Marston is actually going to make an appearance in this specific game, and this is the trailer that showed it all. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. So they say the West had had nearly been tamed. This means that the age of outlaws and the age of cowboys and all of that gunslinging is almost over. And that it's kind of hard for these guys to survive now. So a lot of this trailer really focuses on conflict and you're going to be able to see just by the text alone that they're setting you up to see how tough it really was for John Marston's gang back then. And the newest protagonist of Red Dead Redemption, Arthur Morgan, is going to be a big part of this trailer. So you're going to be able to see exactly what it really means to be an outlaw in the dying age of cowboys. So in this first scene, what you really notice is that the gang has just stopped a train and they're about to rob it. So you can actually see the whole gang there, which is crazy because you kind of see um, every single person who's a part of that family. And these characters are going to be a big part of the game. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see who they all are. Let me just list them down. Let's have a look at the picture right here. So looking at this, I can just tell that it's going to be seven outlaws, just as you can see on the cover of the game. Obviously, you have John Marston that everybody's so excited to see. You also have Javier Escuela, who you followed into Mexico in the first game, which is pretty crazy because, you know, like he was a big part of the first game. Then you see Dutch Vanderlyn, who was the leader of the pack and who apparently taught John Marston everything that he really knows. And it's really cool because Dutch was a huge part of the game as well. You spend pretty much the last half of the game chasing Dutch into the forest. Now the next person that you really see on this list is Arthur Morgan. So Arthur Morgan is a brand new protagonist of Red Dead 2. They have confirmed that he's going to be the only guy that you play as in Red Dead. A lot of people were speculating that just like Grand Theft Auto 5, you'd be able to switch characters back and forth and kind of see different perspectives like that. But that's not going to happen. It's going to be Arthur Morgan and they're kind of building the whole story based on this one strong character. And he's kind of like the, uh, the enforcer of the team. He kind of keeps everybody together and he keeps everyone in line on the pack. And this trailer actually shows a lot of conflict concerning Arthur Morgan, so that's going to be really interesting. Now the next person that we see here is Bill Williamson. As a lot of you guys remember, the first mission of Red Dead is going to catch Bill Williamson, kind of to talk him down, and then John Martian gets shot. Now that's not a major spoiler, but the coolest thing is, you are going to be able to see Bill Williamson in his element in the second game and that's really cool to see how the dynamic builds up because apparently according to John Marston these guys used to be brothers so it's gonna be really interesting to see that now the next guy that you see here is somebody who's unknown this is like a newer outlaw you can see he's got like blonde hair he's got a big blonde mustache and a beard and there's another one right there in fact if you look to the right side you're gonna see a Native American outlaw as well and he's really cool because he seems uh, he seems very quiet in the rest of the trailer that you're gonna see so these are the seven guys that we're gonna be seeing in Red Dead Redemption 2 and who are gonna be like a major part of the story. This is kind of what drives me wild because Rockstar is so good at making characters just a cohesive part of the whole story coming together. So this is gonna be pretty interesting for sure. Now, this is what we have so far. We have the seven guys in front of this train. Now in this part of the trailer, you're gonna notice that Arthur Morgan actually says, we're more ghosts than people. You can kind of see the resentment and, and the fact that they've accepted that they're like a dying breed. At this point, the gang no longer thinks that they're ruling the show. Um, Arthur clearly can tell that his time is almost up, that the time of Outlaws is almost over, and you can kind of tell that they're under a lot of uh, conflict there. You can kind of tell that they're being chased by everybody. They're going through a lot of hardships, they're going through a lot of relationships that are being mended and being broken at the same time. Now as you guys can see, this part is based around um, a bonfire, and bonfires 
were a huge part of the first Red Dead. You know, you'd be able to sit down next to a bonfire and kind of just, like, you know, just talk about things with the other people around you, and they would actually tell you stories. And it was so cool about how the stories would be so varied and so, so cool. Just because of that atmosphere, you can kind of tell that bonfires are gonna come back to Red Dead. If you look at the character right in front of the bonfire, that actually looks pretty much like Uncle. If you guys don't remember, Uncle was a character at the end of Red Dead 1. He kind of just lived with John Marston and his family and he kind of helped out on the farm and stuff. But he was kind of annoying. So, you know, what do you guys think of that? Let me know what you thought about Uncle because I always thought he was really freaking annoying. This also means that we're actually going to find out why John Marston hated Uncle so much. They don't really explain that in the first Red Dead game, so it's going to be so interesting to know. He must have done something horrible to earn that kind of disdain for sure. Onto his right, you can kind of see um, Arthur Morgan. Just like looking ahead into the fire. You can you can kind of tell how much of an effect and how much of a relationship Arthur really has with the rest of the characters. It's pretty amazing. Now in this next part, as you guys can see, there's like horses. You can see Arthur Morgan is like, you know, he's swinging his rope around. He's about to go and break some horses in. And that was a big part of the mechanic in the first Red Dead. So definitely that mechanic is going to be making a return. And you're actually going to be able to, I guess, break horses in just like you used to. Everything that Rockstar is doing to immerse you in the world of cowboys is kind of coming back. Now the next part of this trailer, like, you can clearly see, this is like a town with like everybody doing their own jobs. There's like somebody tending to his horse, there's like some people selling, there's like some people in the streets just like sitting down. So it's all about the immersion with Rockstar and the kind of world that they really build with this kind of immersion. Uh, you know, they are the masters of world building, so definitely that's, uh, that's gonna be welcome to see return. Now this part is really cool as well. I noticed like they have this theater act going on. I guess you can go and have entertainment in Red Dead 2 as well. And uh, that's gonna be pretty cool to see because they actually give you a lot of um, entertainment if you have some free time on your hands. You can see the whole gang just kind of looking onto the town as a fire just blazes across the scene. So the theme of this trailer was very, very heavily centered on fire. And uh, that's really amazing because it's just a symbol. I guess they're kind of like elevated at a position there. It looks like they're looking down at the town. I guess maybe they've gone and robbed the bank or something. I can't be sure, but definitely it looks really, really cool. Just like side note, you can kind of see all the characters here. You can see Dutch Vanderlyn right up front with a black hat on. And you have Arthur Morgan looking on as the enforcer. And you can see some of the other guys there. I, I guess you can see Bill Williamson there. You've got the brand new native outlaw as well, who's like on the right side. On the far left, I guess you can see Javier Escuela, right? Good to have a closer look at the characters. A lot of people have been wanting to understand who we're gonna see in the newest game, so Rockstar definitely did a good job there. Now this is a cool part, and I'm gonna pause right there, because if you look to the left, you can kind of see that blonde outlaw that I mentioned, and he, he looks pretty tough, and you know, they're talking about mistakes. And the coolest part about this is, obviously you can see that Arthur Morgan, the brand new protagonist of Red Dead, is actually under a lot of conflict and it seems like maybe he's made some sort of a mistake he seems a little bit resentful maybe it's like uh, it looks like maybe he was speaking to the law or something he seems like a smart character who's going through a lot of transitions and a lot of conflicts in his own head and i guess player choice is going to play a really big role in this game and arthur morgan's going to be a big part of that so that's pretty cool just stopping right there there's this female character on the screen um she's definitely not uh, John Marston's wife, as a lot of the people suggested, because she looks really different from her, uh, from her anyway. I guess she's a new character that's part of the gang, and uh, we're gonna learn a lot about her. So it's gonna be pretty cool to understand what role she kind of plays in the gang, and how she fits in with the rest of the outlaws. Now, this scene right here is pretty interesting as well, because it kind of looks like the guy with the small hat right there is Edgar Ross in his younger form. I guess the guy to the right has got to be the main antagonist of the game because it looks like they've been cornering the gang. You can see Dutch is right there and you can see Arthur Morgan on the left side and they're kind of like having this little showdown, this little talk between each other. So this is interesting to see. It gives us a look at kind of the antagonist of the game that we're going to be able to expect. I'm just speculating here, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, you have the comment section down below. Just uh, share your opinion. It's totally cool. We can talk about it. I'm definitely going to reply to those. Right there to the back, you see the first look of John Marston, which everybody was um, so so psyched about because he was such a beloved character and it's just good to see him make a return and to understand where he actually came from because there's a lot of questions and a lot of intrigue to the mystical nature of John Marston's past so it's just nice to see that and the fact that we're gonna find out more about him is really cool now here we see another look at the antagonist that I mentioned earlier and I guess he, it looks like he's kind of standing in the town of Blackwater where you know they mentioned that there was a massacre in that year 
and he's just like standing in front of this building and you can kind of tell that something has gone wrong. So I guess we're maybe going to get to see the massacre in the game itself. We're going to get to see what the consequences of that massacre really were. So that's interesting to see from a lot of perspectives. I mean, how did the game feel about it? How were they involved? And how was the federal law involved with it? Because as you know, a lot of the game is going to involve the game being chased by the law and by bounty hunters. Now, this scene was the one that made me most excited for the game. Like, this is when I knew I got to pre-order this game as soon as I get my chance. And the coolest thing is, you can kind of see in the flesh John Marston as he's been laid down to his knees. I guess he's in some sort of trouble. You can see his scars, like look how fresh and realistic they look. It seems like just recently he's been cut open, you know, he's been attacked by somebody who maybe loves using knives or something. So we finally will get to see the origin of John Marston's scars, which was, uh, you know, such a big part of the next game, you know, which kind of made him this haggard, tired, traveled outlaw. And what's interesting is you can kind of see that Arthur Morgan and Dutch Vanderlyn are kind of watching from this window. Now this is interesting specifically because if he's in trouble maybe they're going to go and save him, maybe that's how he's going to be a part of the gang, or maybe it's just something else. You never know with Rockstar Games what kind of story they're really going to bring into it. And uh, this is just a really strong moment because you can kind of see Arthur Morgan contemplating choices. He's contemplating the choices to see if he should actually go and save him or you know what's going to happen. So. It's really going to be interesting to see the character depth and the, the depth of story in terms of what are the consequences of my decisions. I mean, it's, it's going to be so interesting to see that. Now this last shot here is really nice because, I mean, it's just so atmospheric. You can see like a town, you've got a town that's burned down. Arthur's just like looking on on his horse and he's kind of contemplating the, uh, the nature and the symbolism of fire and how it's, it's burned down this whole town. Maybe something really messed up has happened there. We don't know yet, but I'm super excited to find out when the game comes out. Fire was the theme of this trailer. It's very artistic, like Rockstar did not let me down. I know a lot of people were talking about how they really wanted to see some gameplay. Well, let's be realistic. Rockstar is not going to show a lot of gameplay. Even for Grand Theft Auto V, we didn't get to see a lot of gameplay until very close to the game's launch. So this is going to be interesting to see um, where they take it from here. So. so guys, I don't know about you, but I am super excited for Red Dead Redemption 2. And I'm actually playing the first game again because it just got a 4K patch recently. So the game just looks insane in 4K. I'm really enjoying going back to the world of Red Dead Redemption and trying to understand exactly what I'm going to be able to expect when Red Dead 2 comes out. So let me know if you're going to get the game. Let me know if you're excited. Just drop your comments. Give me any theories. What do you think about this trailer? Do you think I'm wrong? If I'm wrong, let me know. I don't mind being wrong at all. If you think I'm right, let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think the most interesting part of this game is going to be. And let's start a dialogue here. Let's actually talk a little bit. So thank you so much for watching this video. I know this isn't the kind of video that I normally make as a musician, but I love games. So sue me, right? And obviously, if you like the video, just uh, let me know by leaving a like and subscribe to me if you really enjoy my content because I do a lot of gameplay stuff and definitely I love playing games and talking about them. So there's a lot more content like that coming out. And if you enjoy my music, just uh, thank you. Good on you for that. I'll see you next time.